Everyone is well aware of the 1960s Cessna crash on Mount Lincoln in the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge. You can hike to the location where the Boyd small aircraft fell victim to the unpredictable Oklahoma weather. They never made it to Las Vegas as intended as they were flying too low and smashed into the southern side of Mount Lincoln. What you may not know about, however, is the fact that there have been several deadly helicopter accidents in the Wichita Mountains. Now, one in particular was brought to my attention by my friend Randy Hill, who works at the Wichita Mountain Wildlife Refuge. Randy has spent most of his life around the Wichita Mountains and has met some very interesting people in the process. One of these people told him of an Army helicopter crash in the vicinity of Mount Scott. More people seem to think it was on the northwest slopes of Mount Scott, scattered amongst one of the rivers of boulders. Many hikers have put time in searching out these areas only to come up short. More than likely, any wreckage that hadn't been taken for souvenir probably slipped away under the rocks. It would take years to confirm actual wreckage in that area. Last year, I was hiking a portion of Northern Fort Set with my youngest child and we found an area of interesting wreckage. I couldn't confirm what it was and I have yet to actually go back out to that site and visit it, as access to hiking on Fort Sill can be somewhat spotty and unpredictable. Now, this is nowhere near the area my friend Randy told me that he had heard about, but nonetheless, it kept the fire burning inside me to find the possible wreckage. We found several big pieces that didn't appear to belong to any vehicle that I could identify. I decided to ask around in a couple of Facebook groups if anyone had heard of this crash near Mount Scott. This set in motion a wild goose chase that would span a couple of days on Fort Sill. We decided to check out some of these areas firsthand on post to see if we could find any evidence to try and crack the case of the Hilo crash. Lured in by the awesome missile displays, we got sidetracked at the Artillery Museum for a short time, checking out the really cool displays, one of which did include a Cobra helicopter. Now, as for the stories, I had talked to several people on Facebook and some stories and theories were somewhat outlandish, but some locations did seem to line up. First, we decided to set our sights on the Rabbit Hill area. In the 1950s, Rabbit Field, just to the west of Rabbit Hill, was heavily utilized for practice sorties. Many people stated they thought a crash was located here, some even mentioning seeing debris scattered amongst the boulders. But after investigation, it turned out that was just the exoskeleton of a Huey placed there for training. It has since been moved away from the area that it was spotted. Now we'll take this moment to talk about Fort Sill hiking briefly. So there definitely are sections that you can check out and explore, but you have to get a pass on base and you have to sit through a wildlife class. And then the day that you want to hike, you have to go actually sign out and get a placard to put in your car. Uh, that way people know you're actually out there. There's accountability. You know, everything is very unpredictable because maybe what is open today is not open tomorrow. Next, we went further west to check out another area near Costain Hill that was rumored to hold a helicopter crash at one time. We hiked around for a little while and didn't find any wreckage, but we did get some awesome views as Costain Hill is an 1,800-foot peak that affords great panoramic views of the entire Wichita Mountain Wildlife Refuge. Here you can see Jed Johnson Lake, Central Peak, Mount Roosevelt, Mount Sheridan, Wall Mountain, and then Mount Scott. And of course, Kellen found some really fun places to climb around. We also stumbled upon an old dam that I had never seen before. It appeared that this dam had been constructed over a hundred years ago and was built by miners to hold water for panning from the numerous mines that were found in the vicinity of the actual dam. The water was running and it was beautiful. With time running out, we figured we would make one last stop on the far west side of the range near the old Gopher Airfield. We ended up near what remains of the old legendary Craterville Park and we finally found what we were looking for. Well, sort of. We found an old Marine Corps Chinook helicopter that had been stripped down and was being used for training. With helo parts strewn all over the ground near the chassis of the actual helo, it definitely looks somewhat like a crash site. Ultimately, we struck out on locating any authentic crash sites on this day, but it doesn't mean there aren't any out there in more difficult to reach places. A former pilot had mentioned that a staff car was actually dropped from a sling load somewhere over the range, 
but he wasn't sure if it was ever found. Several others told stories as if there were many crashes out along the northern rim of the Wichita Mountains on private property in the Mount Tarbone and Mount Sheridan vicinity. Some individuals spoke of stories where fiery crashes had taken place, but they were kept quiet by the Army and cleaned up quite quickly because it was private property and they weren't authorized to fly so low over said land. I have definitely come across some strange finds in the Wichita Mountains over the years, but up to this point, no confirmed Hilo wreckage. So, if you have any further information about any Hilo wreckage in or near the Wichita Mountains, let me know in the comments. I'd love to learn about it.